Hey, what's happening, everyone? Football Manager Mobile 2022 is finally out for your iPhone and Android. You know, we had the tutorial videos for the last year and the year before that. So now let's see what the newest installment's like. Paid for it $13.99 Canadian, downloaded on my iPhone. We press new game. Let's see what's changed. We still got career. We got our seven challenges. We got my club. Let's enter career. So in the past, we were able to do four nations, and now it's been upgraded to five nations. So let's go England, France, Italy, Germany, and Canada. And this is a quick intro video. Let's just get right into the game, see how it works, see what's changed visually. Let's go with Arsenal. There's the unlockables. Again, my profile, so PC, Canadian, I've been dead in the past. My reputation... From the old games, coaching badges, none. Coaching style, none. All right, so it looks like we're about to enter our first campaign in the brand new game. Let's get it. See, Football Manager is by far the best game you could have for your phone. By far, nothing touches it. It's interactive. It's pretty accurate with players. Great ways of playing and developing and go season by season changing New teams, old teams, rich teams, poor teams. Arsenal have appointed PC as manager. Pink and purple colors. Assistant coach. But man, we'll do all these in more detailed videos. Let's get into gameplay and see what you guys are going to get into. Line up. All right, so you can see the new players are in the game. Tamiyasu, Benjamin White, Lukanga. We're playing QPR in a friendly at the Emirates. So what's changed? So right away we pick up the speed. We know this. We want to get rid of replays. So it looks like it's just about the same as the last year version. So we scroll through the screens. Still nil nil. Smith Rowe with the go. And it was an own goal. So it's one nothing QPR. Wow. So pretty much this is the same as the last way, the gameplay. It's not as sophisticated as the computer version with the actual characters, but you get the idea with the circles. Of course we know Lacazette and Rowe and Saka. Ooh, Lacazette, experienced striker, Arsenal. So this game is going to be a lot of hints. We're going to find clues, tips. Substitutions look about the same. We're just doing quick changes here. It's a friendly. It's just for show. So Arsenal has been such an improved team in the league right now. You can see all the new players in here. It's fantastic. It's exciting. I can't wait to work on this squad. Remember, there's scouting and coaching staffs and a whole bunch of stuff to do in this game. And you just tweak it to your ultimate performance, formation, player dynamics, team dynamics, wages and negotiating contracts. This is by far the best game for your phone. Football Manager Mobile 2022, our third year doing tutorial videos. So QPR light work for our Arsenal team. A little bit choppy, maybe because we just downloaded it, but overall it's about the same gameplay as the last year version. And there we have it. We beat QPR in the first friendly. Tactics, formations, and player rules in this game. So to start off, let's go to the menu on the left. We're going to hit the red button, third from the top, and we're going to go to Tactics. Just like last year, we could do tactical style, our formation, and our player roles. The starred blue ones are the ones they're suggesting based off the players we have at the moment. But I play my own way, and we're going to play vertical tiki taka. They give us some suggested formations as well. And here's sort of what I like, but we'll do it to my liking right now. So first off, we have to figure out, you know, 
what players do we have? If you know about football, you know exactly who could do what. Let's just say Leno. Let's take a look at his statistics. So we look at his stats, and as we swipe to the right, a little bit about him. Happy to play next game. We're going to turn him into a sweeper keeper. His contract. His recent form. His history. His trophies. His positive and negative traits. So right away, we're seeing a suggestion play Ramsdale over Leno. His training. Again, we'll go into more detail in future videos on what we're looking, working on here. Just a quick little summary. Here we'll see his season progression. Here we'll see his stats for the leagues. We have his best friends on the top, his negative relationships at the bottom. Looks like him and Stegen have beef as they want to be the number two for Germany. And of course, his professionalism. So everybody has their own style of play. Every game I play the same. Kind of a attacking 4-3-3 with wide fullbacks that go high up the pitch. A sweeper keeper for the over the tops. Two ball playing center backs. One CM that kind of tacks more into the final third. The other one that kind of stays back and plays that ball and switches to play. I like a Chiquarista type player, but advanced playmaker works as well. I like my wide wingers as inside forwards, which they are already. For me, the best striker is the poacher striker, getting into that box and finishing the final ball. Lastly, we just update some of the positions, best of what we like. And there we go. So we have our formation. As we scroll down the right, we see our other players in the squad, like a Kolasinac or a Xhaka or Martinelli. Our bench players like Nico Pepe. We're going to update this to best of our liking later on in future videos. If you look at our shape, I like to attack. I like to play wide, open up the field. I like to play fast, fast, fast. And I like the players to express themselves. Again, based off the players you have, your wage bill, your youth players, your experienced players, these tactics might not work for you. You might like to contain, keep it narrow, and slow down the game, staying very disciplined. As we go to defense, I like to press high up the pitch, all over the pitch, with no offside trap. We time waste because we're playing the mental game. And we're all, out, all in on tackles, committed, all in. Yellow cards, red cards is the risk we take when we play. But again, based off your players, your opponents, what league you're in, what are you going to do? Attacking, this is how I run my attacking scheme. Early cross, shooting on sight, run at the defense. Because we have pacing wingers and a lot of players that could dribble and can drive the ball forward like Smith, Rowan, Saka. We like to mix our playing style, our passing style, playing through all three channels. And goalkeeper, let's mix it up. Some short, some long. Finally, you got the set pieces. So you click on which area of the final third that you want for your play players. So here I go to penalty kick. I could say Obama, Yang, Lacazette, and go all the way down the list to my better players. For corners, I would just pick the corner, same thing. Based off who's on, let's say Saka put it in. And number two, Smith Rowe, for example. You have your free kick positions here, your longer free kick positions, and then your wide free kick positions. Based off your players, who are the best people you could put in there? Player positioning and player training. So based off the positioning, you could see most of my squad here are dark green, meaning they understand their position and their player roles on that position. Except one man, my wing back, my new player, Tamiyasu. To help him retrain to better understand his position, we'll click on his name. We'll go to actions on the bottom right. And we're going to go to retrain position about four from the top. So as you can see, my man here is very versatile. Can play on the left side of the pitch, the center. But we want him to be a right wing back, getting down the line, getting to the final third, and helping create our buildup and our goal scoring opportunities. So if we get him to retrain his position, we click here. And the next message we should see is he started his new training regime, which is aimed at retraining him to become a more natural right wing back. Based on the Tamiyasu's age and potential, he won't take him too long to get to this new position. Older players might reject changing your position entirely. If you want to put a player towards more of a red zone to a green zone, it might take him a couple months to get there, and you may even give up doing it. So... 
try to find players who kind of already halfway towards a new position you want them to play. Let's click back on Tamiyasu. We want to work on his training regime now. So what we'll do is we'll swipe to the training page. So now that he's a right wing back, what are the things we want him to do? So first is make, soft, make sure he's training as a wing back and not an inverted wing back. I want him to cross the ball, right? So intensive training because he's young. Let's get his crossing abilities up. Now check on this every couple weeks, couple months and see his improvement. And after he gets to about 14, 15, we want to also go towards more of a pace, right? Pace again to the final third. Another important one is just simple passing. He's still a defenseman, so you may want to work on tackling. And technical skill is always important in the Premier League and the top leagues. The more technical ability they have, the more opportunity they have to do right decisions in the right moments. As they get older, movement, teamwork, and the mental skills will be more important as the technical ability is obviously going to go down over time. So there you have it. How to retrain positions and how to alter the training regime to get them to become the player you want them to be. First or second things everyone wants to do as soon as they get this game is work on their transfer policy. New players in, old players out. Try to get your own personality into your favorite club. How do we go about creating or offering a transfer? Here's a couple ways. The bottom left corner, press the magnifying glass. Go to scouting agency. And here you can look for the top players in your country. You can go by nation. So if I go to the world view, we have Messi, Salah, Mbappe, Kane, Kimmich, national view. We got the Man U players, Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal. We could also swipe to the right, and we have the young under 23s with the most promising statistics. Here we find Saka, Sancho, Adoy, and a few more top players in the world and in our nation, Halan, Pedro, Davies. For our purpose, we're going to find an experienced player for our midfield who's still young enough to grow and to become a capable player. You either go find a club, search by nation. I'm going to go to Italy. I'm going to go to Inter. And I know a player who I want. Well, there's two. There's Nico Barella, so we'll offer at the rate he's going for, I will not be able to afford him. So my backup option on this squad is actually Sensi. As we look for Sensi, here he is, Stefano Sensi. Now I can scout the player and make an offer, but I kind of know who he is, so I'll go right into it. So here I could offer to do a transfer. I could offer to take the player on loan, or I could just inquire about the player. We can negotiate the fee. We can make it an immediate transfer, an end of season transfer, or an immediate transfer by loaning back for one year to Inter Milan. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. Sum on percentage, if I were to buy Sensi and then sum them in two, three, four, or five years, how much percentage of that sale will Inter Milan get? Obviously, there's a buyback fee. Maybe they want to put that to buy the player back in two or three years. And of course, we could exchange a player, which I rarely do. So this is what they want for Sensei. 67. For our purposes in the video, we'll just do it. So now after we do the transfer fee with the club, we have to negotiate with the player on his wages. So offer contract. So first off, what's his role going to be? Key player, first teamer, a rotation player, or a backup player that barely plays. Younger players actually have a fifth and sixth option called promising player, and young player, which will buy more time if they don't get the playing time they want in the immediate situation at the club. For me, he's gonna be a rotation player. Now what's his wages? At Inter Milan, as you press existing contract at the top, he gets 61K a week. For me, he wants 160 to be off the bench. Wow. Let's negotiate. So he's going to be an expensive player off the bench, but I actually like this guy. And for our video purpose, we're going to do this. I always suggest for players under 26, five-year contracts, signing fee, I only do with older players so they take less term. For example, a 31-year-old, they're going to push for that third or fourth year. Nah, one or two years you get with me, but here's some more money up front. 
minimum release fee. That's what they do in Barcelona, pretty much the buyout clause. So if you put 50 million, a club like Chelsea come in, they pay the 50, automatically they get the right to negotiate with your player and take them. The last one's relegation fee. If you get relegated from the league you're in, here's a cheap fee a team could just put on, take, and your player's now theirs. Let's finalize the deal and see how this looks like. So since because he's not English, he needs a work permit, but because Italy is a top nation footballing world, it's no problem at all. The deal is now ready to take place, ready to sign Stefano Sensi. Grazie, beautiful. So Inter will develop him for one more year. Then I'll take him when I get rid of Vilnani and some players I don't need at Arsenal. I'm selecting a club captain, vice captains, and the effect on team dynamics. So right here we see the post as manager of Arsenal. It's my job to appoint a club captain and a vice captain to lead my team on the pitch. Ideally, these roles should be given to experienced players with good leadership qualities. But I can do whatever I want. So before I select the captain, let's look at the team dynamics. So for this, red button, I got the team report. As we look at our team summary, we have players that will work hard for each other, good morale, we're young, we're creative, and we have depth. Our problem is we don't have too much money to keep up with Chelsea and the bigger clubs with their wage bills. My suggested 11, usually your captain should be starters. Our squad depth. Our team statistics, our youngest player is 17, our oldest player is 32, and our most international experienced player is Xhaka. Highest earner, Aubameyang. But here's the key, the team dynamics. So our club is professional, we have good work rate, we're determined, we have good morale, and our loyalty is uh. As you look at our social groups, our captain should probably come from the core group of players, so let's load that up. As we see, Players in the core group. We're going to have more say and more power in the hierarchy, as you see. Core group's the closest in, this, in the club. Secondary are players who have other social groups. Usually newer players or younger players are in this one. Ostracized players could be in this one as well. And then others, people just looking to see, what should I do? we got to settle in a bit more. So here we see Sambi. Samyasu and Odegaard, although Odegaard, I think, should be in the secondary group at least. And the last thing we'll check out is our hierarchy. Our team leaders in terms of personality are Tierney and Xhaka, with Aubameyang, Lacazette, and a few other guys just underneath. So based off of this stuff, let's create a captaincy. So you could do it this way, by going to your tactics, and the last button here on the right, captain. So are you sure you want to remove Aubameyang as captain? I actually do, and Xhaka. And now I'm going to put Tini as my captain. My vice captain will be Aubameyang. And then let's look at Xhaka as a third. I just want him being the main captain in our squad. After that, I shall put Ramsdale for the future to learn. Thomas Party. Now let's see what the players think about these new. So no one's upset, but no one's extremely happy either. And the reason is probably because Arsenal doesn't have a lot of leadership players. When you pick a good captain or true leader, lots of players support you. Right here, no one's mad, no one's demoralized. At the same time, no one's too excited. But over time, we'll change that. So there you have it. How to create a captain and how to check your team dynamics to find the best captain for your squad. Tini's first game of captain. Let's see what he does with the team. So again, the key for this, you want to speed up the gameplay, get rid of the replays. And each game should take no more than two minutes. And look, he scores as captain in his first match. Isn't that fantastic? Over time, let's see if we can lead us to a trophy or two. Saka, a great goal. Team looks inspired. Preseason is a time to experiment, so at the 60th minute, I'm taking off everybody. 
and we'll do it right now. So we'll talk about more tactics and substitutions and all that in future videos. Ultimately, in preseason games, want everyone to play just a little bit, get a taste for the game. The manager options, the board confidence, the finances, and our board requests. So we keep upgrading our club. We keep growing every season, getting better and better. So first off, let's load up the manager options. So I like to be the head coach, but I like to delegate a lot. So youth development, I give to my youth coach. Reserve manager to my number two. And a chief scout will be Elias, my first team scout. I always let them do the friendlies. I know in the past videos I was playing them for video's sake, but let them do the friendlies. Let's not waste any time. Squad numbers, eventually you're going to have new players with the regenerations. We don't even care about the squad numbers. And you want them to recommend mentoring roles in case you forget to check in on the players and the in-depth stats. I also tell them to, if they can, loan out players under 21 automatically. Don't waste my time on that. And the last thing I do is I say I'm not interested in leaving my club. So they put more trust into me. Press confirm. The next thing we want to look is the board confidence. So at this state, they're going to watch how I do in all competitions. They're going to watch our match-to-match -match performance. They're going to watch our transfer policy. They're going to watch our finances, how we use the money. Are we spending it the right way? Are we overspending? And the most important one for you is going to be squad harmony. As long as the squad's harmonious, playing well, and they're all happy with each other, you'll always have a chance to keep the job. If squad harmony is poor, chances are everything else will be poor as well. As we go a little bit up here, we want board request. So here are the things with our transfer budget. We could actually allocate money into these things. I like to do improved training facilities and improve youth facilities right away every season because that's how your club grows. You get better youth players. The players you have get better and better. So let's request with our transfer money. Let's fix these two things right away. Unfortunately at Arsenal, they're not preferred to make our club's training facilities better. Well, a team like Chelsea or Man City could which could be a problem in the future. Even our youth facilities, at least here they understand we're a young club, let's make this better. And we've taken money out of my transfer budget to put towards this project. Now over time, our reserve team will get better and better. My young players will get better and better, making them more accessible for the first team in the future. The last thing you could do is actually a request for holiday. So I like to do this after the season around May. I like to skip for a month. So holiday, reject all officer players, don't offer anyone contracts, cannot buy any new players. So I like to do all this stuff myself, right? I just want a week off, skip the next match just to show you guys how it's done. We pretty much want to simulate the next match. And of course you saw that we changed the manager options. We're not going to play the next match, they're going to play it for us. There you see, balagon has been accepted as loan offer. That was automatic. He's going to go, and that's okay. And there we skip the friendly because the managers, my assistant managers, took control of it. And there's a little insight into how to keep the game going at a faster pace. You want to take care of your manager options. You want to take care of your board requests to make sure you're upgrading the club. And lastly, you want to take holidays at the right time to simulate the season without doing a dramatic effect. I wouldn't simulate during Champions League, but of course I'll simulate during that one month gap of the World Cup in 2022 in December because what else are we going to do? If you have any more tips, hints, and tricks in this game, let me know. Leave a message in the comments section. I'll get back to you guys in a bit. Take care. Ciao.